come from, whether in South Carolina here, whether in this city, or whether in another part of the country, that you hear. And it's important, essential that you hear, that your voice resonates not only within your communities that you come from, but resonates around this country about this important moment. Dr. King used to talk about, he used to talk about a sermon, he used to give a sermon about Rip Van Winkle. I don't know if you all remember Dr. King's sermon about Rip Van Winkle. You know the story about Rip Van Winkle, the great fable, where Rip Van Winkle went up to the mountain, went to sleep. He went to sleep, and as he was going up to the mountain, he passed by a little small place which we would characterize as a bread and breakfast inn. He saw the face of there on their picture of King George. He goes back up the mountain, sleeps. When he comes back down, he passed by the same, the same inn. It has the picture of George Washington. What does that say? That Rip Van Winkle slept through one of the most important history, most important moments in human history. We can't do that. The most important where this extraordinary change that happened, that he slept through that. That's what we have right now. That's why I'm down here, and that's why every single one of you down here, because we understand the gravity of this particular moment. I haven't had the experience in my lifetime, you know, in the moment that it has. The way this is building, the way that the wind is at your back pushing you, is very important for us to, to realize that and take heed of this moment. And it is because we have someone who has integrity, someone who has a history of fighting for those who need to be fought for and need to be looked at, someone who has said, I will not compromise when it comes to justice. Yes. Yes. I will not compromise yes. when it comes to justice. That's what it is. You're among the four, over four million people who come here, who's donated an average of $27 to make this campaign run. But it doesn't run on the money itself. It has to run on what's in our heart, what's in our soul, and how we want the future to see, what the country we want to build, the country we have the possibility to see, building. The men and women who've, who've been through other struggles here, young men and women who have struggled for the first time and seen it for the first time. And we come together and bond because of that. Because of that, because we, we, we have to understand that it's within our hand. We, demos, ordinary citizens, ordinary citizens within our hand to pull us up and make this country what it could be. As Langston Hughes said, let America be America again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let it be the dream that it used to be, yeah. where every man is free. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. And that's what we have. And that we're here. I, I, I wish I could be march to you with every door, but I ain't 22 no more. <laughs> you know, I wish that I could knock on every door and talk to every people. We had we had a little place where we were here, a little uh, where animals, was, huh? Animals. And with animals, animals on the other side. We just came in here and thought we gonna get some ribs, <laughs> but we still there had a conversation, you know. And it's a real conversation. People are asking these questions. Everybody in there was African American. I said, wait, wait a minute. Let's look at this. Let's look at this situation. This is South Carolina. Where do we have a possibility to imagine and to think that we have the power as ordinary citizens to change this around? Where do we have this moment? We send elected officials to, to office, and then we don't hear from them until they're raising some more money or they want your board. That's everything. Then we hear all the system. We know this game. I know it. You know, I have a relationship with everybody in the Black Caucus almost over, over the last 25 years. We did some great things with the Black Caucus. When we're defining and redefining the struggle around South Africa and the end of apartheid, we did some great stuff. And there were some great moments there, a particular moment. But we can't, we can't be bought out at this moment. We're not for sale. We're citizens. We're citizens here to make our voice heard and to stand up for justice. And that's a hurt. We're here to make this. <laughs> This is not Ernie of personality. There's nothing there about Ernie of personality. This is about this moment and the essence of what the message is. The message is, is that we, these ordinary citizens, can transform this country. We, we, the people, can transform this country. That's what it is. 
And I, you don't have to thank me to be here. I wish I could be, I wish I could clone myself and be a hundred of me to be everyone <laughs> to give the same message and to talk about the same thing. But bless me, you got work to do here. We got, right now, we got just this week to do this work. That means we got, there's a lot of you know, door knocking, there's a lot of talking. I want you to get to those people you don't think, not the ones that you can get to, the ones you don't think you can get to. Those are the ones we say. Sometimes we, we comfortable in talking around the people who, who we're comfortable with. And we know basically how they what their feelings are. But their mothers and fathers and everything else who want to hear your voice and want to hear you. They're young people who know that they have you and as you as a mentor as well for us who've been there. They're young people because this is this is protracted struggle. This is when we, we elect Bernie as president, this is not simply going to stop us. The, the ball doesn't stop here. We're going to have to fight every inch of the way. Because we're talking about every single thing is on the table, whether it's climate change, whether it's how we define work, and how do we define our relationship as human beings. What is our relationship to each other? How do we build community? How do we build that legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King? This is what all this is about. This is all of you who been through that moment, those of us who dreamed those moments, who wanted those moments, who embraced those moments, and stood up. This is what this is about. And make no doubt about this is exactly what we have to do. God bless all those politicians who had a moment in clarity when they fought and struggled for something. And we embraced them for what they struggled for when they were young right? and, and vibrant and everything else. God bless them when they did that and everything else. That doesn't mean that they, they get a pass to what they do now. <laughs> that doesn't mean we have to show them. You know, we the people as Americans, African Americans, Asian Americans, gay, lesbian, every single one of them, Hispanic Americans, every single one of us, white Americans, every single one, every single one. I met, I met two women who were from, who, 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 who were from Spain, who were from Madrid. I met two other women at, at another rally when we were in, in, in Sumter today who were from, who were from uh, Italy, who came, who were talking about, have you been to, to uh, 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 Naples and Sicily and everything? These are the people who come here, who found their way, and have found their way to us. And we, and we can only do what is important for us, and that is for us to stand up and stand our ground right now and say, we're not backing off, you know? You know, <laughs> ain't nobody gonna turn us around, ain't it? Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna turn us around. Ain't nobody gonna turn us around. Ain't nobody gonna turn us around.